Welcome to DFAB RhinoCam 2 tutorials. And for this tutorial, we're continuing our um, three part flip mill. And for this one, we're going to be covering pocketing. So here's what we had set up from before. And since we're going to be covering this portion in the next tutorial, I can go ahead and hide this. And since um, we're not actually going to be cutting out this shape um, for this part. We can hide this as well, <clears throat> leaving our pockets and our registration marks. And then I've added some um, drill holes here so we can screw down the piece of, of material to the table. First thing we need to do is uh, make sure that we have our tools lo loaded. And we do, but in case you need a refresher, um, the second icon right here, click on that and it'll prompt you to navigate to where you have your tool library located. And after we do that, we can go ahead and close. And the first step here is so we're going to drill, make our drill holes. And for that, I just want to make sure that I select all my points. And I go to the last icon here, which is the, the hole icon. Pull down and go to drilling. Now you see that I've had have my regions loaded. And if I want to add any regions, I can just simply select drill points here and add those to my existing list. Next, go to tool. And for this, we're going to do the eighth inch drill. I like the eighth inch drill better than the quarter inch drill. Um, one, my screws aren't going to wobble around when I'm screwing it down to the table. And two, uh, this will give me a smaller hole where my registration marks are, and that'll allow me for um, more accuracy when I go to do the flip mill. Feeds and speeds. For the drilling, we're going to do 18,000 RPMs. This is how fast the bit is spinning. And then the rest are going to be 50 with the exception of the cut feed. Now don't worry about the cut feed here. Um, 240 is just fine. The bit's not going to actually be cutting um, in a lateral fashion. It's just going to be plunging. So next move on to clearance plane. And first I want to make sure that my clearance plane box is checked and not the skim clearance. Skim clearance is used for parallel finishing, and here we're just going to use the clearance plane. And for that, we want to specify a height. Now, the height is your material plus um, a half an inch. So this turns out to be 0.125 since I'm using quarter-inch plywood. And my cut parameters, since I'm using a more delicate bit, a thinner bit, I like to use the deep drill. Now the deep drill is going to do it in a stepped increment fashion and my total depth again is going to be the material but we're going to add a 0.05 and this just goes through the material enough and the 0.05 just it ensures that it makes a clean hole all the way through. Your approach distance should be changed to 0 0.2. 0 0.1 is a little bit close um, what the point one will tend to do is make marks where you don't want marks. Uh, that's if your wood is bowing a little bit. And your step increment, I'm just going to cut this in half and do point 0.4. Sorting is important. Um, cuts down on your traveling times, which will cut down on your total time. And I like to use a minimum distance sort. So let's generate. And you see that the red is our traveling and then the yellow marks are are the drilling and it's created a new folder over here in the MOP set one if I need to go back and change anything in that set I can either double click on the folder and I can go to any of the tabs or I can just expand the folder and these are basically the tabs but in expanded form So next we're going to do our pockets. And for our pockets, um, we want to select our regions first. And 
this fourth icon over is the two and a half axis milling icon. If you pull that down, you can go to pocketing. You'll see that all my regions are already loaded. <coughs> and my tool will change, <coughs> excuse me, to a quarter of an inch square end mill. And this is typically what we do, what we use with uh, most of our operations, uh, profiling and pocketing operations. So select that, and then feeds and speeds are next. For this, we like to change to uh, 20,000. We like to spin this bit a little bit faster. It has two cutting edges on it. Um, this will give us a really clean cut when we're um, engaging the material on that edge. And we like to keep this at 240. Now, the 240, what that is, is while the bit is engaged in the material, this is how fast it's moving through the material. So it's, we're asking it to move 240 inches per minute through the material. If you need to speed up time, you can also use 300, but 240 will give you a cleaner cut. Our clearance should be the same as the last operation. And our cut parameters. Um, here we're going to talk about tolerance. Tolerance is the um, accuracy that the machine can come within your specified parameter. So here we're asking the machine to come within uh, plus or minus a thousandth of an inch to our our region. Um, that's really really accurate. If we ask it to go any tighter. Um, it actually will kind of kick us out and won't do it. So thousandth of an inch, your stock is at zero, and we're going to do offset cuts. These are circles. The offset cut works a little bit better than linear cuts, but if you like to experiment, um, you can do the linear cuts, but then I recommend doing a cleanup pass. And this will ensure that you get your complete clean circle. So offset cuts, keep this on mixed, and our start point, we want to start from the center of the circle and work its way out. Our tool diameter is going to be 50%, and this is uh, small enough to clear out all the material, but large enough to, um, to not really extend our, our cutting times too much. Cut levels. Now remember, we're taking this 0.75 uh, piece of material and we're cutting down to an eighth of an inch. So our depth is going to be 0.625. Now these next two um, blocks right here, we have the opportunity to break up our um, step cuts. The bit will step down a certain distance for each pass. And the, the rough depth, our first cut, we like to do a 0.375, which is 3 eighths. And this um, really makes use of that sweet spot on the, where the double, double blades on our comp compression bit. So this will give you a really clean cut if you use this first. Now, obviously, we can do 0.375 all the way down, um, but we like to uh, prolong the, the, the bits and extend the longevity as, as much as we can. So for those last cuts, which are not as important as the first cut, we like to keep it within um, a range. And that range is 50% to 75% of the bit we're using. So this happens to fall between 0.125 and 0.1875. And it wants to snap to, to this number. So I just let it do its thing. Depth first is very important because this will ensure that um, each circle is getting cut out 100% before it moves on to the next circle. If you uh, check level first, it'll do it in steps and increase your, your traveling time tremendously, which increases your overall time. Entry, exit, these all need to be zero. We only use these for um, cutting in aluminum. Don't worry about advanced cut parameters. 
and sorting is minimum distance sort again. Depending on how much geometry you, you have, um, your toolpath computing could vary. For this, it's not too long. And if you see, I'm going to zoom into this hole, and this is what an offset cut looks like. So the bit is coming to the center and working its way outward. And that is pocketing. Thank you.